I didn't like practice. I mean, I, I, I'll do it because I knew it was necessary and I knew it helped me get better. But for me, it was the competition of being on the floor, man. Well, you know, practice was my thing because I figured if I could piss my teammates off the day before a game, I knew going into that next game that they were pissed off at me and everybody that didn't have a Northern Illinois uniform or an Illinois uniform on, they was in trouble because they was already pissed off because I had pissed them off the day before at practice. And, right. you know, you anyone on- Nick, KB, you, you, you can't say that and not give me a story, man. You, you got to give me <laughs> one story of what you did to piss somebody off now. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I, I, I'll give you two, one at Northern and one at Illinois. At Northern, you know, I come in and, you know, I, I was scoring. And, you know, of course, I had a lot of uh, seniors and uh, juniors on the team. Uh, that was kind of unhappy that, you know, that I was having all this success. So we was at practice, and uh, this, a buddy of mine today, Jerry Williams, and I was going at it. He was a starting point guard, and we were doing individual drills. And I was beating everybody, and he was the last one. You know, it's kind of like a uh, king of the mountain. And he was the last one, and uh, he came out, and I told him, I said, hey, look, man, Ain't no damn ball player coming out of Ohio. You know, he was from Alliance, Ohio. I mean, Buck Williams come out of there. And I'm like, uh, hey, ain't no kid from Ohio going to beat me in Illinois. And I beat the crap out of him. I said, hey, you know what? We playing against Ron Hopper and uh, Eric Newsom tomorrow. You got to take it out on Eric, who was a point guard. And also, he was from the state of Ohio as well. And he did. He came out and, you know, had a, a fantastic game. And we ended up winning. And it's just you have to push your teammates, you know, and I knew the button to just piss everybody off. And I didn't care because I figured if you were pissed off at me, then you're going to be really pissed off at your opponent uh, that you played with. And, you know, in the same in Illinois, I mean, I used to piss off everybody. I was that guy that come to practice. If you was having a bad day and I knew it, your day was even worse that I knew you had a bad day. I didn't care. Right. But I knew I was going to get the best out of you. I mean, I used to get on the Kendall skin all the time, Nick, um, Marcus, all of everybody. I didn't care. I was that guy that was so charismatic. I didn't care about you being mad at me because I knew it wasn't going to last, you know, five or ten minutes because right. that's how much love you have for each other. And, you know, they, they look and they be like, man, here go KB with that bullshit. And, <laughs> you know, that's how it was. And they be like, man. And the coaches love it. You know, Coach Henson, uh, Coach Collins, Coach Nagy, uh, Coach McDougal at Northern, they love it to see that a teammate can push another teammate's button and make him respond in a positive way. Well, you, you know, know you, you've coached the same as I have, and that's one of the most important things. When you have your players that can not mm-hmm. just police one another, but that can motivate one another, you know, mm-hmm. when they're out there on the floor, I mean, that's a definitely a major thing. Uh, uh, it's a positive for the team. It's a positive for the coaching staff. It, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I think it just helps everybody all the way around. It does because you, that coach knows that's less he has to say and that you're going to respect your teammates even more than your coach. Not to say you don't respect them, but when it comes from one of your peers, you be like, all right, man. Because, you know, I, they are, no, I tell my teammates, and man, hey, man, you bullshit, man. Play ball. Get, get in there and rebound. You know, right. and vice versa. I didn't, I didn't mind if my teammates got on me. I wanted them to get on me. That way I could play even harder than I was. Well, you know, most times when, when teammates are holding each other accountable, it's like you're saying, it, it does nothing but add to what you do, who you are. You're out there with your brothers anyway. It's a band of brothers. So, you know, if your brother's getting on you, you know he's getting on you for the right reason. So I'm sure there was a lot of, you know, back and forth with you over at Northern, bro, because you got bumped to All-American status, not just in oh, 85. Yeah but all American status in 86. And then you transferred to the University of Illinois. I got to ask what, what prompted, and I'm sure, you know, Illini Nation wants to know what prompted the transfer, especially since you were doing your thing um, at the MAC level. Well, you know what, um, when that process came up, when I was leaving Northern and everyone, you know, uh, I love the media. I love, I love them to death because they were like, where's he going? Where's he, can he play here? Can he play at Illinois? He's not a big 10 player. He's not a big East player. He's not big enough. He's not strong enough. And I love when they write stuff because I make them eat their words. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was thinking about coming to Illinois and Lauren Tate, a good friend of mine, wrote an article. Well, you know, he, he, he did all these things in the Mac. 
uh, he, he's not that big. He can't do that in the Big Ten. He, he's not going to be able to help anymore. And I just looked at it, read it, and laughed. I'm like, wow, this guy really don't know me. You know, I said, but yet I've been proving people wrong my entire life. Why should I stop now? And, you know, what people fail to realize, when I was at Northern, we played DePaul. They were ranked uh, in the top three in the country uh, my freshman year. Uh, we played Northwestern, the Big Ten, who was pretty good back then. We played West, um, Wisconsin, Marquette, you know, Miami and Ohio, they had Ron Harper, uh, uh, Ball State, they had Dan uh, Palombizio, right. you know, uh, 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 Booker James at uh, Western Michigan. All these guys are NBA players. Went on to the NBA, John Long from Eastern Michigan. So I was already playing against uh, uh, future pros as a freshman. And um, when I got to Illinois, I, you know, I played against uh, Lone, you know, in the Pontiac tournament, uh, Larry in the Pontiac tournament, uh, Steve in the Pontiac tournament. I seen Kendall play. I knew about Marcus and I knew about Nick when he left Prosper to go to Simeon. So I knew all these guys and we all played against each other in the Perry State game. That's what people didn't realize. Yep. We saw all those guys, not only Illinois guys, but all other big team guys that were from the state of Illinois because the Perry State game was our Illinois Olympics. You know, oh, you yeah. look forward to the summer playing because you knew you were going to play against the best players from throughout the state of Illinois. No doubt. I, I agree with you 100%. I wish they still had the Prairie State games because I, I, I absolutely loved it. I mean, I didn't oh, yeah. play every year, every summer, um, mm -hmm. but I, I absolutely love just that competition, and you're right. And I think there's another thing that the media – um, especially guys or writers or, or journalists that haven't played don't understand. There's one thing that you can't measure. I mean, one, you had all of the physical attributes. I mean, you jumped out the gym, you played with a motor that not very many people play with. You got a dogged uh, determination. As you mentioned, people tell you you can't do something. It makes you want to run through a wall and do it. But there's one thing that you can't measure. Um, and this is especially in this day of analytics. You can't measure somebody's heart and, and how big the dog is in it. Yeah, that's it. And I said, one thing, you know, my, my grandfather and mother always told me, let a sleeping dog lay. So when, you, when you wake him up, you better be ready for the fight. <laughs> you know, it's definitely going to be a fight. <laughs> but uh, that, that's actually great because you're 100% right on that, bro. So you get to Illinois. Mm -hmm. And how, how was it, you know, just walking in? Again, as you mentioned, that, that team had some dogs on it. It had some high-level guys on there um, and, and guys that you had played against that you had already known. How, how was that um, coming together and, and looking at that team when you guys stepped on the floor in, in that first practice? Oh, but he, yeah, not even the first practice, because I know y'all probably – y'all hooped over at Empey the same as I did. Oh, yeah. How was it walking on that court with those guys? Well, you know what? It's a lot of guys on that team left Empey every night pissed off. Uh -huh. I'm talking about pissed off to the highs of festivity because <laughs> Empey was where uh, all the girls was at, all the athletes, football, that all the athletes was at Empey. Yep. So if you got your ass busted at Empey, everybody <laughs> in, on campus knew about it by the time you went to camps that night. You know, everybody was like, damn, man, someone so dumped on you like this and was and I was the kind of guy, I dunk on you and talk shit while I'm dunking the ball before it even goes through the net. So I'm, I'm really going to piss you off. And, you know, and we just, but it made everyone accountable and made everyone new. When you walk through that door and empty, you had to have your A game. Because then you know if you lost that first game, you might not get back on the court to the end when everybody was leaving. So, you know, it was important to pick your five players that you were with that you felt had a better, good chance of winning. And, I mean, the football team had some players. I mean, Howard Griffin, Mel Agee, Frank Harley, you know, um, uh, Quinn. Uh, I mean, they had a bunch of players that was uh, high school basketball players that played football. They don't want, And, I mean, we was loaded. So, you know, they would talk stuff and we bust their ass and they'd be like, oh, let's go out on the football field. And we'd be like, hey, we can go on the football field too. You know, but that's how much love we had for each other and we competed every day. And, and they knew coming in, you know, like I told the guys when I got there, I said, hey, man, everybody in this room is uh, McDonald's All-American or, or Census All-American. I said, that don't mean shit. 
I said, we got to come out and play every day because I'm going to tell y'all to y'all face. I'm going to bust y'all ass every day. I don't care what what your status is, what you came out. You can be the number one player in Illinois coming out of high school. I said, that don't mean shit to me. I'm going to bust your ass. I said, you're going to know who I am. So all that media talk and all that glamour you receive, that don't mean nothing. You're going to have to show me every day that you can live up to that status. You know? And I think that's what made us so much better because everyone competed. They wanted to prove to each other that, you know, I can do this, I can do that. I'm good at this, I'm good at that. Right. Well, you know, I think that's one of the, the great things from definitely from our era um, was the pride factor. And, and not, to, not to put down anything with these guys um, playing today, but everyone wants to be, and when you watch the games today, even when I was coaching, I couldn't understand how guys wanted to be friends and how they could shake hands and talk to guys out there on the court. I couldn't do it, KB. I, I couldn't do it. And, hey, I, man, it's and, you said that. and you'll know that. Even when we was in Ippy, even though we were cool, of course, with everybody on our team, with everybody on the football team, man, it, it almost got some rough and tumble going on in there simply because of the competitive nature. Yeah, I remember we was playing at the University of Tennessee in Champaign, and this uh, guy ran into me and I knocked him on the floor. And Steve Bardo went to pick him up. And I told him, I said, Steve, you pick his ass up, I'm gonna knock you down there with him. <laughs> and the dude looked at Steve and said, he said, damn, man, battle crazy. And Steve like, yeah, he <laughs> You know, but that's just the competitive mix. I, and I told him, I said, man, he's like, he said, KB, you know, later on, he was like, KB, you right, man. I said, there's a reason he was on the ground. I put him there. 